Hello class. I hope that you're having a good semester so far. Today uh, we're going to be talking about bibliographies, citations, and how to not lose unnecessary points. For most of this time that I'll be talking to you um, about how to engage at the School of Public Affairs, especially with your writing, I'll be talking about how to gain points. But this week, to start off, I want to make sure you don't lose any silly points that you don't need to lose. And that's all, that's what citations and bibliographies and style guides are all about. So let's start with talking about citation styles. All right. The key, I want you to think of this like a goalie. Okay. You've got a bunch of people out there who are going to be scoring you points. That's your actual ideas, your writing, what you're thinking about. You need to score as many points as you possible. But none of it matters if you give up all of your points to the other team because you don't have a good goalie, all right? So I need you to be a good goalie. That means spending just a few minutes keeping your points. And the best way to do that, because most of the things in most of the uh, citation styles at CU Denver are APA, is to use this resource. I've left it on your Canvas page, and it's also in this Prezi if you want to come back and see the Prezi. Here you can just skip straight to the reference list that gives you examples of how to cite exactly anything that you want cited. This is a journal article. Here's a journal article with two or more authors. And here at the bottom you can even look at uh, things like books. Here's a book, Understanding English Grammar. All right. So if you look at these citations, that's a good place to start. The second place that you're going to want to go is here on the left. Look at the in-text citation basics and uh, stuff about specific questions that you may have. If you use this website and use it carefully, you will keep all of your points when it comes to putting together your references. <clears throat> if you have other style questions, you can go to this website on Auraria Libraries page. It has MLA and Chicago citation styles. Those are also going to be very important when a professor asks for those, but most of your professors at SPA will ask for APA. The other thing I want you to think about is, before we get annotated bibliographies, I would like you to think about for a moment about your blogs, and that is to say your posts that you have to do for online classes or for classes that are um, in person, but they ask you to do an online blog on the Canvas page. When you're citing those, you don't necessarily need to use APA, but you should think about how to cite good journalism and how to cite good blogs. I've left you on the Canvas page, I've left you two resources for citing journalism and citing good blogs that can make sure you don't lose any points on those, which is a serious risk. Um, now, for annotated bibliographies, I want you to think about two goals. Communicate the knowledge of the literature, and you should have, by the time you finish with an annotated bibliography, a pretty good idea of your knowledge of literature and have a bank of literature for your future research projects. Okay, think about it like the engagement ring. You want to show off that you have your engagement ring, right? You want to show that you've actually gone through the process of getting to that engagement process, but it's not quite over yet. You also want the engagement ring to move forward into something more. Your annotated bibliography is about showing off the knowledge you already have and also about having something that you can move forward toward the wedding, right? And that'll be your final paper. So there's a cookbook for putting together a good um, annotated bibliography. And here is an example of an annotated bibliography um, posting. Now a lot of people and a lot of the websites that I referenced you to are going to ask for much longer annotated bibliography uh, uh, annotations, right? But I suggest going short. Your professor has a short amount of time and my recommendation always to getting the best grade possible is KISS. Keep it short and sweet. Or keep it succinct, stupid, right? I need you to keep it short. Think about how much, how few words can you pack in as much bang for your buck as possible. And that's why I'm trying to give you not a three or four paragraph annotation, which some people do 
recommend, but most of your professors, and you might want to talk to them first, but most of your professors are going to prefer a three or four sentence annotation as long as you've captured all of the important information about the text. Okay, so here's an example. First, I have the citation there in APA format, after the imperfect APA format. After that, I have the description. Evans uses interviews with black pilots and flight attendants to argue that African Americans must do more emotional labor than their white peers while doing the same jobs. The author leverages her experience as a black flight attendant to contextualize the experiences of her subjects and situates the study on airlines to refer back to an important work in emotional labor research by Hostchild. It's everything you need to know about that book for most of the work that you will do in a master's program. Let's put this down and look at each of these ingredients one after the other. Ingredient one is a terrific citation, a perfect citation, okay? That is exactly what APA demands, written exactly in the way that APA demands it, all right? Make sure that you're following exactly whatever the citation style that you're using. That way you won't lose points. Number two, in her book, right, I'm telling who and where, okay? Who and where. When you uh, are doing a journal article, you might want to say in the journal, public administration review, and specify the journal, because that can be very important for the review. Um, and it's always good to know exactly what journal your research is coming from. So I would suggest for a journal article saying, in the journal, administrative theory and practice, in the journal, criminology, in her book, which her book isn't going to be from a particular journal, so you can just start in a book and tell, tell yourself in your annotation immediately, who and where it's coming from. In her book, Evans, right? Evans uses interviews with black pilots and flight attendants, okay? This is the research method, the method that was used to collect the data to make the argument, all right? Ingredient number four is the finding or the argument. Um, in this case, Evans really does argue something. She uses findings to argue it, but primarily it's an argument to argue that African Americans must do more emotional labor than their white peers while doing the same jobs. This is the primary point, the main point of the book or article. This is the heart of the matter. It's the finding, it's the argument, it's the reason why the book is important, okay? Now, ingredient number five is optional. This is something that can give it uh, a little color or make, uh, put it into context, right? You can either contextualize or give the significance to the book or both. So here I do both. The author leverages her experiences as a black flight attendant to contextualize her experiences, the experiences of her subjects, right? This is the context surrounding the book. Um, and situates the study on airlines to refer back to an important work in emotional labor research by Hostchild. In this case, I'm telling the significance of this study. It's not just a random study on emotional labor. It's a significant study because it's linked back to a very important study. Right? So I'm telling the context and the significance in that second sentence. I do this in two sentences, but it might be that you do ingredient one for two sentences, for one sentence, right? In the book was uh, published by Oxford University Press, which is an important press, right? It might be that ingredient two takes two sentences because the research method is very complicated. It might be the ingredient three, the argument takes two sentences. I'm sorry, ingredient four, the argument takes two sentences because the argument, it might be separate from the findings and they both might be more complex, all right? You, it might go to seven or eight sentences, but you can do it in as few as one and often it'll take two or three sentences to annotate. That's quick, that's simple, and you're getting as much context as you can into each annotation. That'll get you the most points possible on your annotated bibliography. So let's review that. Here are our ingredients. We want a terrific citation, the journal or the book that it's coming from, the method of study, the argument or finding, the context, and then the significance. Or in other words, TJ Maxx. <laughs> That's horrible, right? Because it's not even X's. Although you could do context with the X and the significance can't significance with an X, right? TJ Maxx, no. All right, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be that way, fine, groan. I will accept your ridicule at 970-236-6311. You can text me there, you can call me there. 
Um, or you can send me an email at nuriel.heckler at ucdenver.edu with your questions about annotated bibliographies, citation styles, or any other question that you have about succeeding in your um, year in this uh, at SPA. And anything that you need to succeed in your academic life at SPA, I'm here to help. So reach out. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.